or English button at the bottom of the screen. And again, apologies, Zoom doesn't have an Italian tab. Please remember to mute original audio. So we've got quite a few hands up. We'll get to as many of you as we can. Um, put you into the panel, which will be, first of all, Vinny O'Connor and then James from TalkSport with the first couple. So, uh, Vinny, no, you don't need those. That's back up, but uh, there we are. So, Vinny, I think you're on. We can't see you, but... Uh, which is good. <laughs> uh, James is on, Vinny. Vinny James is a lot, Vinny. <laughs> Hang on a second, James. Sorry about that. It's okay, my friend. You go on. Uh, I'll start video as well. You can see me. I'll ruin your day for you. There we go. Um, yeah, then we'll start with team news, first of all. Obviously, we know that Nat Phillips can't play after his Man of the Match performance at the weekend. I'd imagine that Reese Williams then obviously wants to take the opportunity as well to show again what he can do. But is this more an occasion for experience to give Joel Matip every chance to prove his fitness? And also, how are Thiago and Keita? How ready are they? That's one of the questions. <laughs> so, um, Nabi and Joel trained yesterday fully. Um, so and I didn't do any decisions yet because um, we are still only two days after the game, um, and we have to we have to wait pretty much until the medical department gives us green or orange or red light, pretty much. And um, so we wait. So, but we have um, in a moment moment more in this moment more centre halves available than we probably will line up together. So which is. Good. Well, and uh, how and that'd be trained as well. Yeah. I also want to ask you about Diogo Jota. I'm looking at the stats and seeing that Mo scored six in his first nine appearances for the club. Sadio scored four in his first nine appearances. Now, obviously, Diogo scored four in his first nine appearances. So, what level do you feel that he's reached already? And I suppose how much trust do you have in, in him already? He's good. So um, how players uh, actually should be when they, when they um, join us. Um, he's in the best age, 23, um, already experienced, played a lot of family football, made his way up in Portugal. So it's, um, it's, a, it's, a good, it's a really good boy and a really good signing. So that's the situation. And um, we never hold players back in the beginning. It's just that um, players usually need time to adapt. But I knew before that it will not take too long for him um, because of the way Wolves is playing. Um, it's a very different system, but uh, the intensity level for Wolves is, it was, is on, was always incredibly high. Um, there might be only one player who has to defend slightly less, but not, not, not really uh, a lot less, but slightly is Jimenez. But the boys on the wings, whatever, um, they had to run like crazy, so it was clear physically it will be fine. Technically, we saw he is good, and um, all the rest is then about, yeah, finding your feet pretty much um, in a new in a new environment. And um, the boys make it always easy for new players, and and Joe is a very good, a very good guy. So he, he's really open. His English is brilliant. Um, so it means it was easy for him to step in the team, um, in in the squad, in the dressing room, if you want. And now he played, of course, he was involved in games, but like they all will be involved in games. So it's, 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 it's special. I said Shaq played an incredibly important role as well at a difficult time. So that's the same, that's the same importance for us. And that the, all the other stay fit um, is incredibly important. So um, it's good that we have more than 11 who look like they have a, a, a good shape in the moment. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, Vinny. Uh, then we'll go to James from TalkSport. After James, we'll start going through the list. That we have with the hands raised with Carl Martin, but for now, James. Jürgen, yeah, sitting at the top of the Premier League table, 100% record so far in Europe. Just how proud are you of the way your side has responded to the number of setbacks you've already had so far this season? I don't feel pride in the moment, to be honest. It's just uh, we are in a situation and we have to deal with it, like all have to deal with it, the whole world has to deal with the situation. And so, um, no, it's what, we, what I expect from us. But, I'm not, I think we have to be a little bit careful, like uh, around the Arsenal game we were running away in the league, then we got a proper knock, uh, not, it's not to be careful for us, so we are fine, we know uh, where we stand, it's just in the, in the judgment from outside, um, then uh, we lost the lesson, we obviously pretty clear, um, found our feedback, 
got other setbacks in the uh, in the league um, with injuries, these kind of things, and that's it's, it's all. It's like it is always. We we always had injuries before. We always had to deal with the situation. That's what we do now. Um, but. Look, it's really early in the season, so I don't think um, we should think too much about where we stand in the in the different competitions. We, I think we, we do pretty well with just being focused on the next game, and the next one is for sure um, so far the biggest challenge in the in the Champions League because um, oh, Ajax is a challenge as well, Milan be of course as well, but Atlanta with all what they did now the last two three years. Um, it's a really settled team with a, a difficult to play against, um, very special in their approach, slightly similar to Leeds, let me say like this, organization-wise and, and these kind of things. So it will be a tough one. And Jürgen, can I just ask you quickly about Mohamed Salah? Because he has received some criticism in recent days because of the way he won the penalty. Do you think that criticism is fair? No. I don't know what people need uh, to, what can I say? Right? Look, it was a foul. I think it was pretty much for everybody uh, who saw the situation. So it, um, believe it or not, yesterday morning, I spoke to Mo about um, how it feels. And he has exactly three proper knocks on the foot. And one of them is from the penalty situation. Um, that, uh, that, that's how it is. So there's a knock, and then you go down or not, whatever. Sometimes uh, the refs whistle it. Uh, we don't talk that long about penalties we don't get, uh, to be honest, in other games. But then obviously now, three days or two days after the game, we talk about that, and there was clear contact. So what can I say? No, I don't understand the criticism. Thank you. Uh, James, we'll probably come back to you for a question when Trent's here. Carl uh, Markham, for a question or two to you. Uh, yeah, Carl. Hi, again. Hi, Carl. Hi. Um, can, can I just, just ask you about, about the re-emergence of, of Shakiri? We didn't see much of him sort of second half of last season, but this season he's, he's already had a, a major impact. And, and, and the role he's sort of playing, I think we generally thought of him as being a, a winger, but it, the two passes he made for them to help those two last two goals a bit of show some different to his game. Oh, no. Shagas. I can play the wing, has everything for that, um, but it's a, a great player, played for Switzerland on the 10, so um, they know a lot about football there, so they wouldn't bring him there if they think he's better than another position, but Shrug is a versatile offensive player, played for us on obviously the 8 wing, and now 10 when he came on, um, yeah, that's all the positions he can play. Yes, he was not involved for disciplinary reasons or whatever, he was injured unfortunately, um, and sometimes players have a bad run with an injury with injuries that's, and that what he had is not that he was so that often injured but yeah the calf made some problems now everything is fine and um but it's good for him and even better for us uh, because we missed him last year in a lot of moments in the last season and it's not that we want to let him or keep him out of the team he's a good player a really good player with a massive impact in pretty much all the games he played uh, was part of some of the biggest games for uh, in, in our common history. So, um, just happy to have him back. On, the, on that front, I mean, the fact that he, he's now back and playing, I think when he wasn't playing, the, and he, he missed a lot of games last season, there was speculation about uh, whether he, he, he would be able to have a future at the club. Um, but the fact that he's playing a contribution suggests that he's, he's almost got a fresh start for you. That's how it always is. That's how it always is. Um, yeah, the transfer is there for rumors, for, for some, sometimes for talks, not, a lot, not all the time, but a lot for, always for rumors. Um, and we are barely involved in these kind of things. So whatever happened out there, um, I, I'm not even aware of. Um, but I'm now really happy that he's here and um, all the rest. To start again in four, five, six weeks. I don't exactly when, <laughs> uh, when the next transfer is, uh, it, um, it will be open again. So uh, we will see, but nothing really to say about um, that's uh, the last transfer window feels like it's four years ago. Okay, the last two questions as it stands to uh, Jürgen Klopp will be uh, Per from uh, TV2 Norway, and then we'll finish with Nate Williams and Leicester's. Any final hands we got? Per, over to you first of all. Hi, Jürgen. Uh, just wondering about Atalanta. They really impressed in the Champions League last season. Uh, how good are they, in your opinion, and what do you make of the journey they had over these last few few years? Very good, very good. Top top players, top recruitment. Um, 
very, very well organized. Um, play their system with 100% conviction, so they, they, they know exactly what everybody has to do. Um, they use the, the skills of the, of the individuals in an incredibly smart way. So you can exactly see how they use the strikers, how they use the, the strikers in different ways. You can see Gomez Road in the midfield, which is a completely free, floating, whatever, um, um, genius running everywhere around, make it really difficult to, 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 to catch him. Um, there's a lot of impressive developments of the players as well. So with, 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 with Gosens, one player was he plays, is now German international. Before he, before he played that role in Atlanta, I'm not sure a lot of people knew about him. So that's just one example. And um, so they have a lot of these kind of stories. And um, it, they, they are obviously uh, they have in the team a really good atmosphere and in general in a good mood and a proper fighting unit. So. I, I was last year not surprised. Of course, I didn't know too much about Atlanta before it started, but um, before the season started, but I knew about the role they played, obviously in Italy, um, which was the qualification and for the Champions League. But in the Champions League, absolutely. But uh, the last season it was it was a good one as well. So um, we know how difficult the last season was for everybody, and for sure in Bergamo it was not easier. In the beginning, for sure, more difficult. So, um, and they deal with the situation, all these kind of things. So, they, I mean, they have all our respect, and so I know how, how good they are. Um, it was a, it was actually, I enjoyed um, the analysis. I enjoyed watching them uh, because it's really interesting, and how always in life, um, if you see something interesting, you should try to learn a little bit of it, and that's what we always try. But in this case, for sure, it's possible for us. Okay, final two questions to uh, Jaden Klopp. We'll come from Nate Williams and then we'll finish with Lewis Gibson. Uh, and those of you who will want questions to Trent, um, obviously we'll ask in a moment with their hands on the mechanism for that. But uh, first of all, mate. Hi, Jürgen. My, my, my question, question is about Diogo. He's been really good coming off the bench and scoring goals recently. Another player that did that not so long ago was Divock Origi, but whenever he started, he didn't seem to have the same effect. So my question to you is, like, what is the difference between... Why are players different in scoring off the bench to the ones that start, and what convinces you to give those bench players a starting place? First of all, maybe we should not forget that Divock Origi had really good games when he started. He started against Barcelona, he started against Everton, scored spectacular and very important goals. Um, and for sure not the only two games where it worked out, but um, maybe the two most famous. Um, yeah, the difference is uh, between um, starting and coming from the bench is um, uh, so many differences. I'm not sure we have we have the, we have the time to, to figure that question 100% out. Um, but it's one is uh, the player before a game gets much more information, who starts the game gets much more information than the player who, who, who come, um, is coming on as a sub. Because it's just a time, a question of time, you stand there and you try to give the most important information, but not all of them. Um, but it's about coming in, finding rhythm, um, being directly spot on, these kind of things. And then, uh, but uh, not a lot of pressure because the boys sit outside and then look at that. Sometimes it's now not in a Dibble case or in a Diogo case, but sometimes when a player starts a game, he has a full night at least to, to deal with that, to realize that he will start the next day and all these kind of things. Um, so, yeah, there are plenty of differences, but most of them are, are personal. So, um, how, what, what are you doing? But it's never for, um, never forever. Uh, that you deal, that you struggle with it or not, it's just like a, a, a learning process. Um, both of it coming on is not easy, and, and starting a Premier League game uh, when you are fresh, new, and want to convince and, uh, the whole world, um, then you know, that's all. There's a lot of pressure involved, so that's why players um, sometimes perform slightly under their usual um, level. Fantastic. And then last question for Jürgen Klopp is from Lewis Gibson, and then if people start using their hands on the mechanism of Trent, that would be great. Yes, Lewis Gibson. Um, good morning, Jürgen. Uh, back, back to Atalanta. Atalanta. Um, last season, they scored 95 goals in Serie A. Um, it's, it's the, the most, most in 60 years for an Italian side. Um, obviously, obviously, Liverpool were second in the most goals scored last year in the Premier League. League. Um, how, how do you plan on tackling that? that? Um, and are you going to change the game plan from what you would normally set up? Um, in, in general, in football, it's always like this. You, 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 
Sometimes you have to defend the situation in the last moment when it with a block or a goalie save, that's absolutely okay. But um, always when a team is um, really good in, in, in creating finishing moments, so when they score 95 goals, they have for sure much more chances. So that means um, these kind of situations where you have to try to um, to deny them if you want, that you just have to make sure that the, the players who are usually uh, finishing, finishing off the situations so that they don't get the ball that often. You, you can, can do that because, because that's something you can do together. The block is one player, the, the save is one player, all the rest is for 11 players. And um, that's why we work on that pretty often, to be honest. Um, and um, that's the match plan that would not be different um, in any situation. So it's, how I said, we respect that. And they are, they are a, a threat. And again, the, 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 the Michelin game was, at, was really a top example for how they are, even on a not sunny, shiny day, whatever, um, they score four goals. So um, that was quite impressive. And um, we are aware of it. Um, and until tomorrow, we have time to make sure that we can deal with it. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Edith. Um, well, thank you very much for that.